Yeah, he I, goes I have a quote ahead from him here, this. Jim. He, he says, all the people that have made life in the lab have cheated. Yes. Uh, yes. So he sort I, of, I, first of I all, can't. we haven't made life in the lab. That's absurd. All the people who have made life-friendly chemicals in the lab, I suppose he could say. But he acknowledges the cheating, but not about his own work? What's going on? Right. right. So, so he said, all the people who have made life in the lab have cheated because they've used molecules that have come from naturally occurring cellular sources. Number one, even if you use molecules that come from cellular sources, they've never made life in the lab. So he has a lot of loose talk that confuses society. Nobody's made life in the lab. And, and so as you know, on, on my video series, that I really drive that point home, that his loose talk, he's responsible for people thinking that people have made life in the lab because he went around saying it. And he understands the magnitude of the problem. He's nowhere close. He said in 2011 that he'd, he'd make life in his lab in two years. And he didn't, you know, it's, it's, it's two years past 2011. I mean, it's, we're 11 years, <laughs> almost 12 years past 2011. And he hasn't yet done it. So, so this is such loose talk that he comes out with. And, and uh, why should Lee Cronin be surprised that Jim Tour is reacting to this? Everybody should react to this. Any chemist would react to this if they followed this work. Nobody's made life in the lab. The junk that he made in that foremost reaction is utter junk. It's not useful for anything. It's no good. Well, let, let's talk about his uh, the, an additional video that um, Professor Dave has come out with, uh, touting some of Lee Cronin's other work on... Um, uh, apparently simulating how whole cells divide. Mm -hmm. um, can you tell us a little bit about those claims and, and then we'll get into uh, analyzing them as well. Okay, so, so he claims that, that uh, uh, the most important thing in his laboratory is bubbles and salad dressing. Like when you shake up salad dressing, you get bubbles. And that's very important for the origin of life. Now. Most of those bubbles are not formed uh, uh, necessarily through a lipid bilayer. They, they are not a vesicle. They, they're, they're just a, a single layer. But if you wanted to form a lipid bilayer, you generally have to take uh, lipids, which are, uh, which are a, a polar head group, which means something that's solubilizing in water, and you'd have two tails hanging off it, uh, and it's, it's called a diaceal lipid. You can take these things and you can you have to put them under shear, which means that you put them between two plates and you, you drive them together and you can form what are called vesicles, which are water droplets surrounded by two layers, two layers of these lipids. One layer is facing inward, one layer is facing outward. And, and uh, um, there is something called a Marangoni effect, which has been known for a long, long time. If you take oil and you let these oil droplets form larger and larger, they will eventually break to minimize the free energy of the surface, minimize the surface free energy, and they will break. And once they break, they form smaller bubbles. There are elementary videos on the internet that show this Marangoni effect. Well, what Lee does is he makes a lipid. It's not a diaceal lipid, it's a mono, it's got one chain. And he says he makes this by an autocatalytic reaction even if it were autocatalytic, it's totally uninteresting. Even if the kinetics for the formation were shown to be autocatalytic, it would be totally uninteresting. But even if it were catalytic, autocatalytic, then he says, and these form these vesicles and these vesicles break and they divide much like a cell divides in, in life. No, he, he doesn't have symmetrical division. There is no DNA in these cells. There is no, no splitting of the, the DNA to go from one side and the other, and then this cleavage right in the middle to have a duplicate copy of this, this uh, vesicle. It's just a bunch of junk. It's a bunch of Marangoni, Marangoni effect where you're just taking these, these lipids and you're just breaking them by, by you have this, this uh, uh, natural breaking to minimize the free energy. This has nothing to do with life. This is not how cells work. Cells have a very orchestrated pattern for cellular division. They have to get, ha they have to duplicate the genome, put it on each half. They have to take the alignment, the interactomes that we talked about last time. Mm -hmm. These have to split to each side of the cell. And then it divides in the middle. 
there is this high specificity that concentrates this, this reaction in the middle to make sure that you get an even division. What he gets is totally uneven division, and he says that this is showing some forms, forms of, of, of protocells, and these are dividing. Oh, look at them, how interesting they are. They're dividing. They have nothing to do with life. This is like an elementary school video, really. So, it, truly, so, it's so an he, elementary school video. He, did, he did, depicts a process that actually has no relevance to how life actually works. Right. So he's and, done a good job of explaining what doesn't need to be explained. And the lipids, the lipids that he made for this, that he says, you, you know, the, these just form spontaneously, 10 pages, 10 pages, single spaced of complex modern organic chemical reactions using modern chemical reagents to make, to set up the system to make the lipids that form the, these vesicles. It's, it's who, 10 who pages. Makes, who, who, so Lee Cronin makes the lipids through he, he makes a the complex, lipids through, with through a complex, complex chemical recipe. Complex organic synthesis, yes. So he has an army of people. He has a very big research group, and God bless those young people. Uh, uh, it's just a shame what he has them doing because they, they think they're doing something that's really relevant. He's trying to convince them of this, and I'm sure they're very smart because they can do really interesting synthesis. But 10 pages of organic synthesis they do in order to set a system up that would do, possibly do, his autocatalysis. It's been totally set up, and it's a really uninteresting. It's just a simple little condensation reaction. So, so the, mo the most interesting thing is the organic synthesis that's being performed by the the uh, the, the organic chemists in Lee Cronin's lab. It's not the the uh, what happens to the vesicles at the very end of the process. Yeah, and he sets up he sets up a a, a little robot with an X Y movable system that that can squirt these little droplets into water from a chloroform solution and into water. And then he has a camera below it so you can watch these little droplets. And so he has a, a whole nother part of his team. Again, these, these are great analytical and uh, chemists that can build this equipment, really interesting. But everything is loaded. The organic chemistry is loaded. The setup is loaded to make his vesicles. It, that's loaded, and all these showing is a simple Marangoni effect, which is a bunch of ridiculous nonsense. But all the all the pre preliminary steps to this are intelligently designed by the chemists in the laboratory to get to that point where then they can then uh, demonstrate this Marangoni effect. Yes, and and so the effect that they so the, demonstrate. this is not is something elementary. that would happen on the early Earth absent uh, uh, absent help. No, I mean you. You might get a Marangoni effect with a bunch of junk because Marangoni effect effect happens all the time if, if, you, if you have oil droplets in water. But what he set up, no way. This, this is totally ridiculous. This has nothing to do with how cells divide. Nothing. This is just a simple little experiment. And what he had to do to set this up. So, so God yeah, bless But The, the, the lipids that he use, is using are actually in some way relevant or similar to the lipids that would be no. in the bilayer? No, no, they're totally, totally unlike what is in an actual lipid bilayer. In an actual lipid bilayer, you have what are called diacial lipids. You have a glycerol, a, a glycerol that you are distinguishing the two ends of the glycerol that are enantiotopic, and you have to somehow distinguish those two ends. And then you have to put on lipid chains, many of them having stereogenic centers that are, that are homochiral. The lipid itself is often homochiral. And it has two chains hanging off. He made ones with one chain without the glycerol component on it. And were they were they homochiral or no, no, there no, was no okay. there was no chirality to them. No okay. chirality. So they, they to were them. at least at best weakly analogous to the kinds of lipids that you find in the lipid bilayer I, I, in a no, cell. No. And and they were themselves the product of organic synthesis produced by a whole host of very smart chemists. 